I'm Kathleen McGivern and I'm Ms. Artastic and welcome back to the podcast. Again, it's season two and oh my gosh, we are months into this school year. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about five art sub tub prepping tips that you can implement into your um, away f- into your classroom for making your away from your classroom time a little a little easier. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast, inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids Challenge, where I challenge you to make art with kids, and I'm taking all kinds of pressure off because... I'm offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker paintings, so there is no excuse for not making this happen. My friend, you're going to love it because it is going to come with a lesson plan, handout, assessment, literally like everything you need to teach this gecko line art project. Best of all, you will walk away feeling confident and your students are simply going to love it. So check it out by going to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this free challenge or you can click the link in this podcast description. It's there. Okay, so let's dive on into this episode where I'm going to be talking about five art sub tub tips that you can simply and easily do. Prepping for an art sub, it's important. And also, doing it when you're sick is super, super frustrating and annoying. Um, There's nothing like planning to be away when you're not feeling good. Or even just like in general, like it's one of those unique jobs where you have to plan for your full day just to be away and I'm here to help you with that okay so here we go like honestly as a teacher I learned in the later half of my years that having your sub tub permanently prepped went a long way I never ever worried about being away or being sick and I even honed it further when COVID showed up and people had to go into isolation in a moment's notice I was always ready and if I had to take a sick day I just put it in, stayed home, and I never ever even worried about it because my sub tub was always prepped. So I'm going to share with you my tips so you can spend like 30 minutes prepping and then be ready for a sick day at a moment's notice always. Okay, tip tip number one here is to have a tub with easy to grab folders. So like I like to keep a tub with folders for individual lessons all pre-photocopied. So in the folder there should be a lesson plan the example, and multiple sets of pre-photocopied lessons. So like if you have six classes in a day, have six sets of handouts pre-photocopied in that folder. So like, for example, like if you have 30 kids in the class on average, or that's your biggest class, then prep for 30 or 32. You know that somebody's going to lose their lesson plan or, I mean, sorry, their like handout when the sub is there, or they're going to like, the garbage monster is going to eat it. Who knows, right? Or a kid will get frustrated and tear it up. It happens, so always just keep like at least one extra. It's it's going to happen, and it's going to be hard for a sub to go figure out how to photocopy it in between. Just don't, just expect that something's going to happen. You're going to need an extra, so keep an extra one in there. But have six sets all pre-photocopied, and then keep them in that folder, so that way... Um, it's all ready to go for a sub and they just have to worry about like teaching one lesson that whole day. So keep the lesson plan and the example in like a clear page protector sleeve at the front. Have at least 10 art lessons ready to go like this. So do this like 10 times. Have 10 lessons that are just pre-photocopied, pre-prepped, all ready to go with their like sub, sorry, with all their like materials just Keep it choice based, right? Have everything pre photocopied, six sets or whatever you need, all ready to go. All paper clipped, nice and organized with that lesson, a like plan, and the example in the front. And then if they're very like choice based, then these lessons could easily be done with a range of ages, right? You won't have to worry about it. So keep it very open ended and then you're you're good to go. You won't have to worry about making it unique for each age group just make it open-ended 
have 10 of them. Boom, you're done. And like, if you do this, you won't have to worry for consecutive absent days. So if you have at least 10 art lessons to go, you're not having 10 art lessons because you have 10 different classes. That is there, so you don't have to plan for a sub for the rest of the year, okay? Or if you're gone for consecutive days, then you don't have to worry because you have lots of days prepped. You have 10, 10 art lessons all ready to go. So, and the sub who comes in will just teach the same lesson over and over again. So hopefully they'll be a pro, bu- pro at it by the end of the day. Okay, so that's the idea. You're trying to make it, give that sub the best possible chance for replacing you in a moment's notice. That is the idea. And the kids will be um, able to feel success because it won't, they're not going to be, um, asked a lot of them, right? You're not asking them to go and try to do a very hard project when you're not even there. They're already anxious because you're not there. So let's not uh, amplify their anxiety. We're just going to keep it simple. The sub is not going to be stressed out because it's simple. And then they get to repeat that lesson over and over again. The kids will feel happy because it was easy to access and it was choice-based. So that is the whole idea. And then you don't have to worry because you're not worrying about it being a hard lesson or anything. It's already planned. You know that they're easy to access mediums. Hopefully you come back to a beautiful classroom when you're not feeling uh, unwell or whatever reason you were absent for. So again, have 10 of those ready to go. If you're away, just send an email or leave a note directing the sub to teach the same art lesson again for all classes and to grab the folder that says art lesson title folder whatever it is, Emily Carr uh, Forest folder. Boom, you're done. Okay, tip number two is to create art lessons that use easy to access or choice mediums. Do not leave a sub a hard to do art project or lesson, just just make it simple. I've been, I was a sub for many years um, and a teacher leaving lessons for subs for many years. Um, It was very hard to go into classrooms and not have easy to access mediums um, or materials or anything. I had a subs or teachers leave me notes and this mediums were locked up in their super organized closet. And then they were, everything had to be distributed in a certain way, put back a certain way. And it was, it was so hard because I was like, most of the time I got called last minute and I had to show up there last minute. And so I was flustered and the kids were flustered because they, anyways, it was, it's very hard to do that. And I didn't feel successful. And I'm, I, I've even had people email me nasty notes <laughs> after, even though I tried my best. So it's best just to keep things simple. If you want to have your, the kids day be successful, you can always revisit things when you get back. So if you're like leaving a painting project, a full painting project, chances are that when you return, things aren't going to be taught as you expected them or there'll be a big stink mess or whatever, right? The expectations of what we have in our mind might be different from what a sub interprets in a couple seconds with a very short note, right? So keep that in mind. Um, we're different people and we can't get upset about at subs for not being inside our heads also. That's just, it's just unexpected. <laughs> um, so yeah, leave us, and I've been like, honestly, as a teacher, like when I used to leave notes at the beginning and for subs and plan for subs, like I used to leave very unrealistic things. And then I, later I learned that was my fault, not the subs fault. <laughs> it was me. So, um, Yeah. So just leave simple art projects that anyone will be successful with and that kids can use any mediums with. Kids are anxious when teachers are gone, okay? Subs are there for the day stepping into someone else's shoes. So we're going to make it easy and then you can get back to business when you return. Next tip is to include an art sub binder. You should leave a binder in your bin, right? So it's all together. That's the idea of the bin. And when I say bin, like honestly, I just go to the dollar store and I get a dishwasher, thick dishwashing bin. Those like white, sometimes they come in color, but they're just like a dishwashing bin. Those are perfect. Just use that. Super cheap, super simple. If you need a little bit more room, get a Rubbermaid, whatever. 
but essentially leave a bit a binder in there that includes important details such as the map of your classroom um it was very difficult for me to navigate someone's classroom as a sub like sometimes a teacher would be like oh it's in the cupboard above the sink well there was like 16 cupboards above the sink a whole row they, it wasn't directly above the sink that I had to look for oil pastels. It was all the way at the end, for example. So not helpful, especially when you're trying to prep for multiple classes in a day. So be very specific and have a map of your classroom for the things that that person will need to find. So they know where to find it. Um, it's just really great to have. Also, a sheet to record star students. I always liked, as a teacher, knowing who was showing expected behavior behavior or were like stepping up and helping out a sub when I was gone because that made me all kinds of help like happiness and like I as a teacher always like talked to my students like you guys know where things are in this classroom so please be helpful to the sub and like like you got this so if I'm away I'm expecting you to step it up and be the leader in the classroom. Um, that's not always going to be possible with every classroom. Some, every, every class is unique. Um, but sometimes you'll get, you'll have those kids that you can really count on. And so like give them permission is what I'm saying. Um, a bell schedule, super helpful. A weekly schedule, super helpful. So that way the person can plan for you if you're away the, uh, multiple days or just so they know what time the bell is going to ring, when time breaks are, Um, what to expect if they're back again the next day, they'll have a weekly schedule to take a look at and then just, they can be, um, aware of that for the next day as well. Helpful, helpful tips for your classroom. Definitely. Uh, rules and routines. Definitely. So they can be consistent and class lists. It's sometimes the office doesn't always have a moment to provide that or if it's digital, it's sometimes just nice to have, um, extra ones that way they know where it is that way even if there's like an emergency right or if there's an earthquake drill whatever I don't know if everybody has earthquake drills I live in an earthquake zone (laughs) fire drill (laughs) let's say fire drill so there's a fire drill um then uh they can at least have that for recording who's uh, made it safely to the zone of lining up outside okay in case they don't really know where you're i don't know i guess the emergency kit should really be by the door but anyway just saying class lists are great um give them basically all the tools they'll need to be successful while you're away they don't have time to figure this out for themselves or like look through every single drawer on your desk like put i like to i used to even keep them like some tea bags in there at my sub tub i'd give them like i'd put stickers in there for incentives I'd put um, extra pens and pencils so they felt like, and, and uh, dry erase markers. Oh my gosh. Okay. Just saying is, I don't know what it was about being a sub, but sometimes dry erase markers were impossible to find or they were all dead. And like, as a teacher, I always had dead markers on my <laughs> whiteboard, but like, it's, they don't have, like, it just make it easy for the sub. Like, give them their own set of everything. Like, go to the office, grab an, and their own like a brand new expo marker, label it like art sub tub expo marker so I know to put it back. Same with the pens and pencils, like just put some fresh stuff in there, all sharpened so they're not looking around for sharpeners and stuff like that. Just give them all the tools they'll need to be successful while you're away. Okay, this will make it so much easier for them, especially if they are notified to go to your school last minute. And like my friend, I've been at schools and in the district I used to work in, um, they would even move me. So I'd be teaching like high school art and then they would be like, just kidding. I know it's like 10 o'clock, but we now need you to leave that class and right now and go to kindergarten. Then I was very disorientated. I didn't like it, but anyways... That's life. <laughs> All right. Another idea is to have art activities. So include our activities in your bin, your bin, sorry, that are pre-photocopied. Keyword here is pre-photocopy. Pre-photocopy everything always. Don't just have the lesson there. Like pre-photocopy it and paper clip it. So that way it's like always literally right to the T ready to go. Um, 
and then they these art activities are just basically things that don't need specific art instruction it could be like roll and draws it could be coloring sheets it could be connect the dot i don't know like look up make some whatever you have just those like individual worksheets is what i'm talking about that don't need a lot of like instruction that like the kid could probably figure out on their own you, um, you can make yourself some like finish the pictures or I have lots of these things in my teachers pay teacher store you can check them out there or in my art sub tub resource all of this just have art activities that way it's like a nice backup so it's nice to have these as a backup lesson um, it could be extra work for like fast finishers it could be uh, alternative work for subs if who are intimidated by teaching art like I've had subs I le- I thought I left the easiest lesson in the world, but they were beyond intimidated by it. And then they just did something else. So instead of like having it something that has nothing to do with what you're expecting them to teach or like not nothing to do with art, um, then leave them things in there. Another cool thing to leave is like books. Picture books are great to leave for a sub. I loved having picture books available. Um, picture books could be read to any grade. So leave some extra copies of like, or even just like your ones you don't always like to use for lessons. Those picture books that are related to art, leave them in there. And that way the sub, if they're feeling like they just need to have something that's going to calm the class, they could read a picture book while the kids are working and, or use it as part of their lesson. If they're just really lost, just leave tools for your sub in your tub. Another thing to keep in there is like some rewards uh, in your bin. So art sub tubs, sorry, art subs don't have time to build rapport with kids or relationships. It's very hard, especially if the classes are short, right? So, um, and sometimes kids are not exactly on their best behavior because they're anxious or they just, whatever. It could be lots of different reasons. Um, Sometimes kids are just really upset that you're not there. <laughs> they just really like you, right? So then they just get really upset that you're not there inside and they just show that in unexpected ways. I think that's a lot of the, I think that's mostly it a lot of the time. Or some people's unexpected behaviors just a little bit more amplified. There's just so many, so many reasons, right? It's a trust thing too. Like kids need to trust adults and a sub is not somebody they trust. They, it's a stranger. So they just don't trust, trust them. And that's, that could be it too, right? We don't know what, every kid's different and we it just have to roll with, roll with their variety of needs from whatever background's gone on, right? So, Now, here's the thing. Rewards, like for me, I am not an incentive fan. Like I didn't ever did prizes. When I give kids gold stars, I would be like, oh, here's my, I just hold like an invisible gold star. Like imagining that's like some like little Pokemon in my hand. Be like, oh, this is Bob. All right, so-and-so, here's Bob. You get a gold star named Bob. Oh, be careful, it farted on your hand. Like, I don't know. I was just super weird, but they, they always loved it, and they thought it was hilarious, and then they kept going with it. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> okay, basically, I'm not an incentive fan, but I do think subs need whatever tool they can get their hands on to have a great day. So like I would leave stickers, candies, bookmarks, um, tons of little prizes. Like, you know, those things that like, even like um, I would have like things like left over from Halloween where like I gave kids like those like rings, those plastic spider rings. I put that in there. They would, I would come back. They'd be like, Miss McGivern. Oh my gosh, they gave me, the sub gave me this cool bookmark. I had such a great day right like whatever incentive that is small and quick to implement leave it in there because they don't have time to build rapport i had time to build rapport i didn't need to use it well uh you know some some that's not um you know unless there's special special cases where that's important um i'm not talking about that but um yeah so like you could even leave raffle tif- raffle tickets like if you don't want to keep a whole bunch of little prizes just have like a raffle ticket roll or like you can make your own um and then the kids who are showing expected behavior or leadership you could leave that they could get those tickets and then when you return they can put their name on it and their teacher's name 
and whatever else information you need probably just a teacher name and their name put it in a jar when they return and then you could do a raffle like at the end of the day or end of the week and then somebody can get a prize one person that's also an option um or they could sit in like the fancy art chair or the teacher's desk for that next class like you don't even have to buy prizes like maybe they can just sit in your chair at your desk and do one class from your desk for a day like you could do things like that unless your chair has fabric and then there's like lice then maybe don't do that yeah but <laughs> just saying like you could be really creative with it or like they could sit in a bean bag on the floor for a day i don't know you could be super creative without buying prizes so basically the whole point of that is just being able to return to your classroom um when you're feeling better and ready to go and the classroom will be like in a ready to go experience there wasn't a whole bunch of drama that you have to hopefully not listen to um and everybody had a good time that's the whole idea of why i like to keep rewards for subs but generally not for me all right so last thing is that's my five tips uh if you're looking for a complete resource and you just want it to be done for you i do have an art sub tub that has art lessons and editable i can't say that word very well editable uh art sub binder and activities so 10 activities 10 art lessons resource for teachers okay it's designed for our teachers in the elementary zone so you can prep like an art sub like a pro with my misertastic art sub tub again it includes 10 activities 10 art lessons it's a complete resource that will give you um, your 10 art lessons ready to go, 10 art activities, assessment, uh, an art sub tub binder, and labels all ready to go to help you plan and be ready forever like a pro in under 30 minutes. So basically your job is just to, really the most time will be typing in the um, editable binder. All of it's ready to go. You just have to type in your specific information and then just photocopying. So that's why I'm saying like a pro in under 10 minutes. Um, this is a one and done resource for your art classroom and for our teachers to help you be ready for art sub planning and for our unexpected or expected absences so never worry about having to plan again because this resource has literally everything you will need for stress-free and worry-free art planning it includes your editable binder labels non-editable art lessons and art activities um, you can watch a full preview of what's included on my youtube channel or if you look at the listing on my teachers pay teacher store link for this will be in the podcast description here but also on my blog, show notes, um, and you can see the full video preview of what's included. It's like very detailed. I'll even show how to assemble it so that like I will walk you through the whole thing. You could do it with me on the YouTube video. I'll walk you through the whole experience. So you can use this art sub tub and art lessons with choice art mediums. So use any art mediums with the 10 activities. And I recommend some art mediums or choice art mediums for the art lessons too. So like there's a recommendation, but they're all designed to be using any art medium if you don't want to use those ones. So super, super flexible. There's lots of room for student choice, experimentation, and flexibility with these art resource. Simple, easy to use, and easy to use instructions for clarity. Like every single lesson, six steps. Like super visual. There's a picture of what to do and like a couple sentences of the instructions. So it's like very clear for anybody to use. Making it great for leaving again for expected or unexpected school absences, emergencies, homeschooling, like whatever it is, like you got, I got this, okay? So um, you can find this link to the resource in the show notes or in the description of this podcast episode or visit my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, Ms. Artastic. If you are an Artastic Collective member, this is also available already for you. So if you go to your theme section in there, you'll see our classroom at the very top. It'll be in there. You'll find Art Subtub resource, okay? So it's available for you already. Or if you're not an Artastic Collective member, you can grab it in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. Link in this podcast show notes. Well, my friend, I am Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off.